All right, we're now going to get into the Associated Press style book. It's going to be the style foundation uh, that we're going to utilize across this course and across any journalism that you do. So we're going to spend some time on it uh, right now, and then we're going to spend a lot of time on it as the semester goes along. You will be responsible for knowing AP style and for writing AP style. And we're now going to start talking about the Associated Press style book. You will use the Associated Press style book throughout every assignment that you do here and really every article that you write moving forth in your career, you're going to use the AP style book in some way. So now's a good time to start to get comfortable with it. So just as a little precursor quiz here, which one of these do you think you should utilize uh, if you're writing a story where it has 8 o'clock in it? Um, do you use the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth one? And the question, of course, is do you use a numeral? Do you write out 8? Uh, do you use the colon with the 0, 0? Do you use A period, M period for anti-meridian? What do you do? Same question for the five-year-old boy. Do you write out 5? Do you use the numeral 5? Do you hyphenate it? How do you know what to do? Now, in some cases, like uh, the five-year-old boy, part of it is English and part of it is AP style. And I could tell you the answer on that one is the third one. Five being a numeral, all ages in AP style are numerals, and then five-year-old being hyphenated because it modifies boy. 8 a.m., not necessarily uh, standard across style, but in journalism, we would also use the third one. Eight, the numeral, A period, M period. And it matters so that we are all doing the same thing across the different avenues in which we're writing. So this is your news writing style. These are the rules by which you will construct your stories. And any questions that arise about whether or not you spell out Federal Bureau of Investigation or utilize the initials FBI, uh, whether you utilize a, a day of the week in addition to the date, these kind of things are answered by AP style to allow us to stay consistent. So here you go. I want you to meet your new favorite letters, AP. And of course, that stands for Associated Press. So the Associated Press style book uh, was created in the 50s, AP being the right now the world's leading wire service. It has been around a long time as a wire service, which means that it gathers information and it writes stories that it then provides to subscriber services. Newspapers, many newspapers subscribe to Associated Press, and so uh, someone who's writing for the AP, uh, Rusty Miller, for example, who covers sports here in Ohio, those stories go across the country under his byline for the Associated Press. Um, in the 1950s, they created this style book, which includes media law um, briefings so that we can have some familiarity with that, but also basically a, a handbook by which we can gauge all style. It's not alone. There are other forms of style out there, the Chicago Manual of Style, the MLA Style Manual. The New York Times has its own style. The LA Times has its own style. But papers that don't have their own set style will utilize a, the AP style book. So this is what it looks like. This is the 2011 version I gave you a picture of. We have the 2013 version ready for you to pick up. This is your Bible. It's uh, part a dictionary, part encyclopedia, part textbook. Um, that's not to say everything's in it. So there's going to be some things you're going to still have to look up in the dictionary. There's going to be some things that you may have to look up online and, and we'll have to come to some understanding of how you use that. I'll tell you, for example, in an earlier semester, someone wanted to know whether it was LGBT or GLBT not in the style book. So we, we had to come up with a way uh, to work that out. But for the most part, much of what you need is going to be in here. All right, so as I mentioned, on the style book, I need you to learn to use this book. And that means starting to navigate it, getting familiar with what's in there, starting to practice looking things up. And I'm going to give you the key concepts here um, so you can get a feel for how you'll uh, know what's important to start looking up and memorizing. These are some of the key things that you're going to focus on. You're going to need to know these things because you're going to use them all the time. So dates, uh, how do you write dates out? Numerals, when do you use a numeral? When do you write out the number? Uh, what do you do about indicating money or percents? Do you use a dollar sign? Do you use the word cents? Do you use the cent um, symbol? What about times and addresses, states, titles, etc.? So I've given you, I'm, I'm going to kind of go through these slides kind of quickly. Uh, there's a lot of them, and I just want you to have a familiarity with them so that you can see where you need to look up information. So here we are, just some information on dates, about which months you abbreviate, uh, whether you use the day and the date, 
uh, when you would use yesterday or tomorrow, which is never, uh, but we do use today. So we also don't want to have the redundancy of Monday, January 3rd. It's just January 3rd or it's just Monday, depending on which one fits. We also uh, spell out months alone or when we're using it with the year. So you have to know which one of the months we abbreviate and when we abbreviate it. And this, this is the order that we're going to use uh, in terms of time, date, and place. Numerals in general, uh, the, the blanket rule uh, with a bunch of exceptions is that you'll spell out any number that is under 10, so that includes zero. Uh, however, there's a lot of exceptions to that. So when we're looking at ages, always numerals. Money, percents, room numbers, temperatures, and weights are always numerals. So although we have this rule, we have to know what the exceptions are going to be to that rule as well, because doing the wrong application of the rule is just as bad as not doing the rule at all. Um, here's some exceptions again in terms of what you do at the beginning of a sentence, uh, what you do with commas, how we handle fractions. These are all areas of the book that you will want to look up and make sure that you understand. And mark them so you know how to find them when they're in the book. Dollars and percents, a little hint, uh, we never use the percent sign. The percent sign didn't exist when we set things in hot lead. Uh, and we wrote out the word percent, and we write out the word percent to this day. So if you at any point put a percent sign in your story, that uh, goes against AP style. Talking about time, we don't ever write uh, 12 o'clock for noon or midnight. We write noon or midnight. We use a.m. and p.m., not o'clock, and we use periods with that. Uh, we're only going to use a colon to separate hours and minutes if, in fact, there are minutes. We wouldn't do it if there were no minutes, like it was 8 o'clock. We would obliterate those two zeros. Um, so kind of understanding what these rules are in terms of numbers when it comes to time will be helpful. More uh, style issues have to do with um, addresses. So looking at what you abbreviate, you never abbreviate uh, the word road. You never abbreviate the word drive because DR period actually would indicate doctor. So what is the rule for what you spell out and what you don't? What we abbreviate, avenue, boulevard, and street when you have a numbered address. So if we only say it's Main Street, we don't abbreviate it. If we say it's 21 Main Street, then we do. More about streets. Uh, these are the rules about whether or not you write out uh, 3rd Avenue. Uh, if it's 22nd Street, you do. If it's 3rd Avenue, then you don't write that out. What you do about north, south, east, and west. So do you abbreviate that or not? Here's some examples for it. And you're going to want to look up streets and addresses in the style book. Now, states are not postal codes in AP style. They are not the same. And know that every single state abbreviation will need punctuation. So if you're uh, putting uh, two capital letters with no punctuation, you're using a postal code, not an AP style abbreviation. And recognize that the rules that we think should fit don't. So Pennsylvania, for example, is capital P, lowercase a, period. Now you'd think that would mean Tennessee would be capital T, lowercase n, but in fact Tennessee is T-E-N-N, -N, period, uh, capital T, and then lowercase. So mark states in your style book and memorize which ones you use. You only abbreviate when you have a city. Titles, you have to realize when to abbreviate them. They go before the name, we capitalize, we can abbreviate, they go after the name, we don't capitalize, and we don't abbreviate. We don't use Mr. and Mrs. in AP style, although we do in New York Times style, so you may see that if you're reading the New York Times. Composition titles, there's some things we place in quotes, some things that we don't. Uh, we also, we don't italicize in AP style, so you have to learn what the rules are in terms of what you're going to italicize, oh, I'm sorry, what you're going to put in quotes, what you're not going to put in quotes. How we're going to deal with these titles, here's some examples. We want to avoid sexism, so we don't use he unless we know that person is a he. Uh, we want to make sure that we identify um, that it's his or her, or uh, make sure that pronouns match uh, the nouns that they're modifying. So we have to make sure that if it's a singular entity, it gets a singular pronoun. Here's some examples of ones that have sexist connotations. Um, mailman, fireman, policeman. Uh, we, of course, know those are both men and women, so we don't use it anymore. Here's some other examples for congressmen and congresswomen. Uh, that's some of the things that we would separate out. 
And we need to understand certain rules. So let's look at something like website. Uh, now, this rule has changed, I can tell you. It used to be uh, that website was two words and the W was capitalized. Now it's one word. Uh, we can also, uh, let's see about the Today Show. So which one of these would you use based on the rule? Um, looking at punctuation when it comes to quotes, where do you put the punctuation? Is it inside the quote mark or out? Um, all of these things are in the book and you need to be able to navigate the book to so here are the answers. Website, there's a special section on social media. You can also look it up under the W and website will be there. The Today Show we put in quotes. Why even try? You'll notice the punctuation goes on the inside of the quote marks. And then you can see I wanted to ensure he would make the team to, uh, there's, when we use the word insure, it actually deals with insurance. So um, you have to understand how word usage works as well. So these are some of the things you're going to look for. Let's. Uh, how would you punctuate or capitalize a magazine title? Uh, mentioning a teenager, the, the voting outcomes. Um, you know, one of the tricky ones is uh, how you would write the 1980s. Do you use the apostrophe? Do you not? Uh, what about if you want to take the 19 off? And here are the answers to those things. So you can get a feel for some of the ways that we're going to be uh, navigating the book and, and being able to answer these questions. This is your responsibility. So you will have to utilize the book with every article. Uh, you're, it's going to be the last thing that you check, perhaps, before you turn it into your editor, who would be me, is what exactly is the AP style usage to make this article as accurate as possible. And I've just given you a little bit of a guide here in terms of punctuation so you can get a feel for um, where they might appear in the book. Now, this was the 2012 book that I took these things out of, maybe a little bit different in the 2013 book, but it's still going to be basically the same.